So I've got these oozing, bleeding sores that won't stop bleeding. I'm having to change my pouch two or three times a day. I was so frustrated. I thought there's no way that I'm gonna be able to do this. There's no way I'm gonna figure this out. I wasn't married at the time, and I looked at my dad and I said, I hate this. And I was just in tears, and I was just sobbing. Hey you all, it's Amber from the Ostomy Diaries here. I've got my dog, Dylan, one of my dogs. My other dog, Ella, is over there on the couch. I'm so excited about this video. I'm starting a new series, officially, called Behind the Bag. And this is gonna be a place where I can talk to you guys, have real talk. I, of course, want to promote education and give you all, all the tips and hacks and things that I'm still learning, but I think that there is such a need for a space to talk about what we're thinking, how we're feeling, what we're going through, how we relate to other people, whether it be our ostomy, our chronic illness, whatever's going on in our life. And so, this is gonna be a place where I can do a little, I've got a little fire behind me right now. Joel and I are in the process of moving, and this is the best setup I have right now where we're living, but that's a whole different story altogether. It's fitting because these are gonna be like little fireside chat. This is gonna be a place where I can share more of my thoughts, how I process things and work through things, and hopefully you can relate, and I really, really hope that this encourages you. We're all in this together, so let's have some real talk about the person behind the bag. Dylan may or may not stay with us. He may jump down, he may not, I don't know. So this video, the first installment, I feel so official saying that, of this series is going to be to the new or struggling ostomate. And I wanna say new or struggling, or maybe new and struggling, because I have felt such, I felt like I needed to do this video because I get so many people messaging me that are either considering having surgery, they're about to have surgery, they just had emergency surgery, or they're just like a couple weeks out from surgery. So there's that special time frame in there of, oh my gosh, what am I doing? What's happening right now? And then there's also seasons, years later, I'm almost six years in, and then there's people who, um, have had it for years and years beyond what I have, but there's also seasons of you're struggling. Maybe you've developed a skin allergy. Maybe you're just struggling. Maybe you're struggling with hydration. Maybe you're struggling with a situation at work or a situation in your life where uh, having an ostomy or a chronic illness or whatever it is you're going through is hard for the people around you to understand and you're having a hard time relating to them. And so that's why I'm calling this to the new or struggling ostomy or new and struggling whatever I was really burdened by a message I got on my Instagram this may have been yesterday day before yesterday and it said I'm in the hospital I just had surgery I'm in excruciating pain I'm three days out please tell me that everything is gonna be okay and you know I'm a huge advocate of being here and telling y'all it's gonna be okay and I think it is but I think it's a journey, and so I want to discuss some things, uh, some strategies and ways of processing things that helped me along that journey. So if you are a new ostomate, or you are researching things and you're thinking, maybe I wanna have surgery, maybe I wanna do this thing, my first piece of advice, just being real, is be patient with yourself. You are not gonna have everything figured out on day one. And that's something because I'm such an organizer and a planner. I am a high school science teacher, if you guys didn't know that. And so I like to know what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, and doing it in every single little detail. And I may be slightly type A a little bit, but it's fine. And so it really was overwhelming to me, especially because my surgery was an emergency. I didn't do any research beforehand. I didn't educate myself because I didn't want to. I didn't want the surgery. I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want any part of ostomy land. 
And so I woke up and the first time that I had ever seen an ostomy bag was on my body. I was not only overwhelmed, I had this weird feeling even when I would shower and I would see my stoma, it almost, you know, that sense of butterflies, almost nauseous, but not, that's how I'd feel when I would look at it. And I was, I remember standing in the shower and being like, is this real life? Is this real? Th this has happened to me. And it's almost like I had to do a check. Like, yes, this is real. This is there. And I was so overwhelmed because there's so many different brands of ostomy stuff. There's so many things to learn. You got to learn how to put it on. And I don't know what your education system is like at your hospital or wherever you had your surgery. But they showed me how to put my ostomy bag on once, maybe twice, and I was on a pain medicine pump, and my parents were there, but they were in shock, and we were all just kind of like, ah, and so we went home, and we were Googling stuff, and I found some other great YouTube channels with Ostomates giving tips, and I found some blogs, and then I realized there's this whole community out there, and we're just trying to figure everything out, and I just felt like I was drowning. I felt like I cannot wait to have this freaking ostomy bag reversed and be done with this and never have to deal with this ever again. And then came skin problems. And y'all, I had sores around my stoma and they were bleeding. And I was on a blood thinner because I had a blood clot after surgery. So I've got these oozing bleeding sores that won't stop bleeding. I'm having to change my pouch two or three times a day. I was so frustrated. I thought there's no way that I'm going to be able to do this. There's no way I'm going to figure this out. There's no way that I'm ever going to be comfortable in this. But y'all, let me tell you, one of my most favorite inspirational quotes, I live my life by inspirational quotes and Bible verses. And one of my favorite, favorite ones is A.W. Tozer. He says, how completely satisfying to turn from our limitations to a God who has none. And let me just tell you that'll preach because I couldn't do it. I couldn't make peace with this and figure it out and understand this on my own. And it was only through prayer and focusing on the Lord. Y'all know I'm a person of faith. And I share that a lot, but that was huge for me. Of course, the people around me were vital. My parents were helping me. My sister helped me. I was learning things online. But I want to encourage you, take a moment, be still, and just focus on God. Focus on something that gives you peace. You have to take those moments to take care of your mental and emotional health, or you're, you're not going to make it through it. You're so overwhelmed in the beginning and you're in a state of shock and you're freaking out and we're human. We do have limitations. And so realize that and give some of it over, give it all over to God. Give it to him in prayer. There's nothing too stupid or silly or weird to pray about. Y'all, you should hear how many times I say the word poop in my prayers sometimes because that was game changer for me. I had to realize I believe in and I serve a God that has no limits. And he can help me feel comfortable in this uncomfortable situation. So that was huge. That was huge, huge for me. This journey has been a spiritual journey as well. To the struggling ostomate, you can do the same thing. There's so many things in my journey as an ostomate in six years. Y'all, I'm still learning. I'm still on this journey. I'm learning new things every day. I'm learning new tips and tricks every day. I text my friends, Tina and Allison all the time and I'm like hey what do I do for blah 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 I'm still learning I'm still figuring things out I'm still growing and so give yourself some grace try to take a deep breath I know you just feel sometimes like it's a dumpster fire and you just want to throw your hands up in the air but you're gonna figure it out you're gonna figure out what products work for you it's gonna be some trial and error you may have some leaks you may have those nights where you wake up and there's poop on you. I, I told y'all this was going to be real talk. There was a few nights in the beginning where I woke up with poop on me. And I cried. And it was hard. And I wasn't married at the time. And I looked at my dad and I said, I hate this. 
and I was just in tears and I was just sobbing. And there's going to be those moments, but you can get through them if you just choose to keep going. Please choose to keep going and pushing forward because then when you're on the other side of it, then you can share your experience. You can figure out what worked for you and you can help someone else. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's what helps give me peace about it. I feel like maybe something I say, who knows? I'm still figuring things out, but maybe something I say can help somebody. I hope it does. I hope it encourages you. So you're going to have times of struggling. I've got skin psoriasis. I have issues come up with that. There's going to be things, but you know what? I'm convinced that no matter what's going on in life, you're going to have struggles. And it's, it's how you choose to face them and who you face them with. Make sure that you've got community. You've got community here online. If you don't have anybody in person, please connect with people online. Message me. There's so many other great ostomy advocates and IBD advocates and chronic illness advocates online. There's Facebook groups. If you go to Facebook and type in ostomy Facebook group, there's stuff there. Um, and take time to meditate on God. Uh, I posted this in an Instagram post the other night. If you don't uh, have a Bible, you can download a free Bible app. And I know, you know, y'all, this may sound corny to you. It, it may sound corny like, oh, Amber's just using her faith. But I promise you, it means something to me. And it can mean something to you. Um, I guess, I guess that's it. So embrace the good. Try to focus on the fact that you're still alive. You're still here. It's for a reason. There's a purpose for your life. There's a purpose for this season. Try to learn, try to grow, and keep pushing forward. I hope this video helped you. I hope you're enjoying this real talk, this fireside chat. You know, I may keep the fireplace, even when Joel and I move into our new house and I get my green screen all set. I kind of like this better. And we may keep a Christmas tree up, because why not? Let me know what you guys want to hear more about, what real talk, because we can get as real as y'all want to get. Real talk, who is the person behind the bag, what's going on behind the bag. I hope you enjoyed this series. <laughs> Dylan is playing in a plastic box that I've left on the ground. So I hope you enjoyed this series. Behind the bag, be sure to check out my social media if you haven't done so yet, at Ostomy Diaries. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I can't wait to see you on my next video. Bye!